I saw Martin Scorsese's new movie, Killers of the Flower Moon, back in October on a Saturday. It came out. I was very excited for this movie. You always love seeing a new Scorsese movie. This is about the murders of Native Americans in the early 1920s by greedy white landowners who looked at it as an opportunity to seize their land and oil. And I saw this on a grand IMAX screen. It was really a great way to see it. It was pretty crowded, honestly, not as packed as you'd expect for a blockbuster, but still people do come out to go see this movie. It's a Martin Scorsese movie, and if you don't know who Martin Scorsese is, well, he's one of the greatest living directors. And he used to make these tightly paced, intricate crime movies. They usually focused on the mafia, always personal dramas known for their violence, their humanity, their depth. Even when you focused on a flawed central character, which is common for Scorsese films, there's always a humanity to them. And I think that's an interesting to it's an interesting thing to note on Scorsese's directorial style and how it contributes to Killers of the Flower Moon. And I want to start by saying it's an interesting adaptation for Scorsese. It's different from his previous films. It's based on Killers of the Flower Moon, a novel by David Grant, a true story. I mean, while most Martin Scorsese adaptations are true stories or have a rhythm to them, um, I think this movie is purposely slower, similar to his recent movies, The Irishman or Silence. I think this film has the slowest pace of all of those movies, even though it's longer than Silence by about 40 minutes and just five minutes shorter than The Irishman, it's really a slow burn of a crime film. The character development takes up a huge stage in the first central half hour of the movie. It takes its time. It isn't until about 45 minutes in that the real action happens, that an inciting incident kicks off the events of the film. And once this happens, you understand where the film's going. You go, okay, now I'm invested. But it does kind of meander at the beginning, and you can kind of see where the plot is building up. It does spend a lot of time on build-up, which really isn't a bad thing. It's got beautiful locations, excellent costume design. Scorsese's clearly put a lot of passion into this, and you really feel like you're there in the 20s. The commitment to shooting on location pays off, even though you might think it's actors in costume, and there's an obvious theatricality to it, the cars of the time period scattered through the streets, and you might think, okay, it's a film set... I think, though, it doesn't matter. It really pays off because unlike when you're dealing with green screen or, you know, something where it's not real, there's just this authenticity to this, this authenticity, sorry, and you really feel immersed because of the effort everyone puts in. I think Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro, they're longtime Scorsese collaborators and huge actors on their own, and just their presence, you know, is a headline, and it's a big draw but I think they really give great performances, both of them. And it probably would have been impossible to get this movie made without big faces like DiCaprio and De Niro. Not because the subject matter wouldn't sell or someone wouldn't be interested in making a movie like this, but because it's a three hour plus drama. And as a historical epic, it already has insurmountable odds to pass at the box office. So a bit of blockbuster star help doesn't hurt it. And it's definitely more of a sell, even though, you know, the movie did fail to make a profit, which is a bit of a surprise. I don't think, you know, it's that crazy you know, considering its runtime. And a lot of people might compare this to Oppenheimer, which was also three hours shorter than this, but there's something to be said for the wave that movie caught. It was directed by Christopher Nolan, who, you know, is known for his modern summer blockbusters as opposed to Martin Scorsese, who now, he's obviously a great director, one of the, a legend, but I feel like Christopher Nolan has this more blockbuster appeal, and especially for younger audiences. And it helps, obviously, that it was released the same weekend as Barbie Oppenheimer. This movie, you know, is, it's a different type of movie. It isn't built like a blockbuster. It's much slower paced, but I still think it is. it does a great job in adapting its story. Now, for those who may not know, the story is based on a factual retelling of the FBI's earliest investigation into the Osage murders. In fact, the book was subtitled The Birth of the FBI, and the film features Jesse Plemons' character in a supporting role as the main character of the book, the lead FBI agent, Tom White, in charge of the murder. But what the movie does right, and it's a hard thing to really nail, is it switches the perspective uh, from the focus of the book, which was all about the heroes, you know, and this goes to the victims and the perpetrators. It doesn't tell the story of a hero riding into town to save everyone. It does eventually get to that part of the story, but the movie's framed in a way so you're mostly focusing on the tragic events that happened to the Osage people, and you get to see as a result how this is dealt with and how the FBI eventually does intercede, and I think it's a great choice because it gives much-needed emotional depth to the main characters, and you can really see the manipulation that the victims of these crimes go through in the film, and you get to see the perpetrators and how this is almost a normalcy for them. I think there's something about the film. It might not be the most entertaining movie, but it still does a great job at telling the story. I do think the movie, I wish it left us in the dark about who's bad and who's good. I think it needs to tread a careful line, but I think it does let you immediately know who's pulling the strings, which is important. But if it had just been a bit more suspenseful, a bit more... Um, leaving you in the dark about certain things and omitted certain things till later in the movie, I think it would have been way more entertaining. But at the same time, I don't blame Scorsese for just 
wanting to tell the story right and not kind of like leave you waiting on certain things. I really think this is a great film and it really utilizes its runtime right. There's great choices here from the casting to the little details of small bits of humor scattered in here. It's very Scorsese and it helps this movie, which is very long and dark, just feel lighter on its feet. The Irishman was also dark and somber. It was a very final movie about the end of a life. And this is similar. Some people might complain about how, you know, it's slow and not a lot happens at first. But I think if you're prepared to take in this movie and see what it builds up to, you'll be entertained. Scorsese's at a point you know, in his life, he's 81, where he doesn't need to make a movie that is so rapid fire with its delivery. As long as he's telling a great story and the movie is overall still entertaining, well shot and edited, he knows people are going to like it. And I really enjoyed this movie. So let me know what you guys think of Killers of the Flower Moon. And let me know if you guys are excited to see it. If you have not seen it yet, it's going to be streaming soon. So guys, go see it in the theater if you can. It's a very enjoyable movie.